What sparked the so-called age of discovery that led to heightened overseas travel, especially during the late 15th century? This was one of the earth-shattering eras that led to a more connected, more globalized world. European obsession with finding a trade route to Southeast Asia led to the establishment of trade settlements along various ports in Africa. By circling around Africa, Vasco da Gama was successful in identifying a sea route to Asia and reportedly reached Calicut in West India in 1498. While K-12 through history textbooks often cite the trade for spices as the primary reason for the beginning of European overseas exploration, they often fail to mention that these maritime empires were also fighting for trading turf outside of their own homelands. Competition between merchants in Asia from Spain and Portugal became so contested that even the Pope had to, st had to step in to settle their dispute. One of the first of such treaties drafted to settle this dispute, or these trade wars we could probably say, was the Treaty of Saragossa, which defined areas in Asia that were under Castilian and Portuguese influence. But Portugal and Spain would butt heads again in the Americas, while Spain was beginning to expand its empire by colonizing present-day Cuba, Mexico, and Central America, Portugal began expanding in the region known today as Brazil. In order to avoid a conflict or even a potential war over jurisdictions, the Pope played referee once again, drafting the Treaty of Tordesillas. The Treaty of Tordesillas drew an imaginary line between the territories that would go to Spain and those that would belong to Portugal in the Americas. Of course, at the time that the treaty was written in 1494, both the Spanish and Portuguese empires were not aware of just how big the American continents were. Had they known, I'm sure Portugal would have been outraged to find out just how much Spain lucked out in claiming a large chunk of the American, co of the American continents in comparison to them. But what was the purpose of the European presence in the Americas? Why have U.S. history textbooks referred to this as a discovery? Well, to the European colonizers like Christopher Columbus, coming to the Americas must have surely felt like, they were like if they were discovering a completely new world. There's a problem, though. The Americas weren't actually quote-unquote discovered since there were already people living there. And um, these were people who were well aware of the terrain, the animals, the plants, and etc. For millennia, the Native Americans or the indigenous peoples of the Americas were not discovered if not they encountered the Europeans for better or for worse. The resulting encounter between Europeans and Native Americans has been referred to as the Columbian Exchange. This phenomenon describes the trade in knowledge, foods, technologies, and even germs between Europeans and indigenous peoples from the Americas. As a result of this exchange, many of the staple foods from the Americas became staple crops for the rest of the world, especially corn, tomatoes, and potatoes. Native Americans shared with Europeans their vast knowledge of the landscape, as well as planting techniques, and even their histories. An, un uh, an unfortunate trade that occurred between them was the trade in diseases. The first devastating pandemics rocked the American continents during the various periods of, Euro of European exploration and colonization. Many indigenous populations were decimated or almost, almost destroyed due to vast waves of smallpox and measles outbreaks that killed thousands. The, Europ the European competition for trade also enveloped the American continents in warfare. Spanish conquistadors like Hernán Cortés and his men sought gold, glory, and land when they colonized the area we know today as Mexico. They conquered the Mexica Empire, also known as the Aztec Empire, in 1521 in hopes of gaining political influence and riches in Mesoamerica. However, they also had to make sure that whatever riches that they acquired was done in the name of the Spanish homeland. As your textbook mentions, 
They engaged in the practice of mercantilism in their American colonies. Mercantilism was the process where European empires exploited their colonial, um, where they exploited their colonies' material wealth for the maximum benefit of the homeland. For example, the Spanish crown benefited from the conquest of Mesoamerica by collecting what has been referred to as the so-called royal fifth. This meant that for all the gold that the Spanish conquist that the Spanish conquistadors claimed for themselves. A portion was taxed, so to speak, and given to the crown back in Spain. Another consequence of the age of European discovery was the institution of chattel slavery. This began with the mass enslavement of African slaves, who were brought to the Americas to work in sugar mills, haciendas, and farms in both North and South America. However, what was chattel slavery? And what made it so different from other forms of slavery? Let's pull some points from Joseph C. Miller's book, *The Problem of Slavery as History*. In both Africa and in the Americas, slavery was, in fact, common practice among native groups. However, what made their practices distinct was that slavery was often considered a temporary status. So, for example, in West African traditions, people sold themselves as slaves in order to pay back debts. However, once the debt was repaid, they were considered free. Also, in both African and North American traditions, sometimes captives of warfare were incorporated into society as slaves, but were freed if they intermarried with somebody in the tribe. For the most part, slaves were generally given a sense of autonomy. However, under European chattel slavery, things were much different. Slaves were not expected to be given any measure of autonomy. Slaves were first and foremost considered property. You were literally on paper considered someone else's property if you were a slave. Moreover, in the Americas. African slaves were considered slaves for life, while at the beginning of the African slave trade, they were they were given the offer to purchase their freedom. This practice became more and more restrictive over time. Eventually, in many parts of the Americas, slaves could only be freed if their owners died and announced for their freedom of their slaves in their wills. But this was not always practiced by all slave owners. Many Africans and African Americans lived and died as slaves. Thus, one of the sad consequences of the Age of Discovery was the discovery of an exploitative transnational labor system that often came at the cost of human lives. Mm-hmm.